PWCs are typically regulated more than other power boats. Many states require both the minimum age and proof of passing a boating education course in order to legally operate a PWC. Strict measures are in place regarding the hours of operation, towing practices, life jacket wear, and the requirement to attach the safety cutoff lanyard. Never allow more people on the PWC than recommended by the manufacturer. If it's a three-seater, only three people are allowed on board, or two if towing a skier. A personal watercraft is defined as a motorboat less than 16 feet in length, which uses an inboard motor powering a jet pump as its primary motive power, and which is designed to be operated by a person sitting, standing, or kneeling on it, rather than in the conventional manner of sitting or standing inside the vessel. PWCs are boats and are subject to all the same boating laws as any other type of boat. They are fast and highly maneuverable and have unique operating characteristics. The operator of a PWC needs to take extra time to learn the operating differences between a traditional powerboat and a PWC. Before starting the PWC, Check the fuel level and inspect the engine compartment paying close attention to wiring and fuel lines. Ensure there is no fuel in the bilge. Prior to starting the engine, the operators must attach the safety lanyard to either themselves or to their life jacket. The most important operating characteristic of a PWC without rudders is that a PWC will not turn unless you give it some throttle. In other words, when you release the throttle or the engine stalls, you lose the ability to steer the craft. Start off slowly and practice in an uncongested area before venturing into areas with other boats. Although you need power to turn, too much power may prevent you from stopping when needed. When stopping a PWC, the operator needs to allow extra room because a PWC will not stop immediately when the engine is turned off or the throttle is released. Remember, boats do not have brakes and stopping is not always an easy task. Know how to operate the reverse lever and use it to stop or slow the PWC at slow speeds only. PWCs are highly maneuverable. The jet drive propulsion system is extremely responsive to slight turns of the handlebars. The responsiveness in maneuvering encourages operators of PWCs to try unusual stunts. These actions are dangerous and beyond the safe operation of the PWC. Always look to the side and behind before making turns. When meeting, crossing, or overtaking another boat, follow the rules of the road. Wake jumping is dangerous when other boats are nearby. Always stay well away from other boaters. Obey all buoy informational signs. When the sign reads no wake, go no wake. Do not operate at high speed around other boaters. Stay well away from skiers, anglers, sailboaters, and any other type of craft that may perceive your operation as annoying or dangerous to their safety. Operators must be able to reboard the PWC while in deep water after falling off. This maneuver is more challenging when the operator is tired and the seas are rough. The weight of the person reboarding and the stability of the model PWC being used also affect the ease of reboarding. Reboard from the rear, the stern of the craft. Older PWC models emit unfriendly engine noise. For this reason, never operate a PWC in the same area for more than a minute or two. Disturbing landowners and other boaters creates undue stress for everyone. Your state and local areas have laws and regulations specific to PWC operation and safety, including laws that deal with the preservation of the environment. Operators must understand these regulations in order to boat safely and legally. Always follow safe towing procedures. The term skiing or towing implies you are pulling at least one person behind your boat. Everyone on or being towed by a PWC must wear an approved life jacket. Always follow the established guidelines and remember to leave an open seat on the PWC for the skier. Check your manual for state regulations to determine if an observer or mirrors are required. PWC operation is a lot of fun but it can also be risky if you don't take the time to practice and learn how to operate within your abilities.
Many power boaters also enjoy paddle boats, and like any other type of boating, there are certain precautions to be aware of. The most important fact is that they easily tip. Canoes and kayaks are lightweight and easily transported and typically have rounded hulls. The rounded hull makes them roll very easily. Always maintain three points of contact while moving around. As you move a foot to step forward, you should be holding onto the boat with both hands. Then with both feet down, move one hand at a time, and so forth. Load the boat properly by keeping the weight centered from both side to side and bow to stern. Never overload the boat and always maintain adequate freeboard. Keep your shoulders inside the gunnels of the boat. When retrieving something from the water, reach with your paddle or guide the boat close enough to the object so you can reach it without leaning over the side of the boat. Don't take unnecessary risks. Stay off the water during extreme weather or water conditions. Flood waters or other fast currents are often beyond the limits of even the most skilled paddle sport enthusiast. Here are some safety tips for paddle sports. Always wear a properly fitted life jacket, especially when paddling in swift water. If you stand up or move about in a canoe or kayak, it increases the chance of capsizing. Take hands-on training and paddle with a friend or group if you can. Be prepared to end up in the water and know how to swim. Sailing is very different from power boating. Sailboats handle differently, have more parts, and require much greater training to master than a power boat. All sailboats have five basic components. They are the hull, mast, sail, keel, and rudder. The hull supports all the rigging, including the mast, spars, and lines. The mast supports the sails, and the sail catches the wind that provides the force to move the boat. They have a keel or centerboard to help stabilize the hull and they are fitted with a rudder for steering. The force the wind transfers to the sails actually makes the sailboat move forward, as the air moving across the sails creates lift. The keel or centerboard keeps the boat from being pushed sideways by the wind. The resistance from the hull and the keel transfers the lift to forward motion. Sailboats don't just move forward on a straight line. They also move slightly sideways. Whether you operate a power boat or a non-powered boat. Knowing the special handling characteristics of your particular boat is an important aspect of recreational boating.